Welcome to the place inside, deep inside your being, where you can find the way out into the cosmos. I am your host, Lawrence Gallian. More and more quote-unquote experts are talking about what we're talking about on this show, namely that one, it is important to give people a spiritual orientation towards their fears surrounding UFOs and extraterrestrials, and two, it is essential to become a fully activated human being, utilizing and activating all the powers and forces latent within you. Coincidence? Perhaps. But word travels fast in this community, and I think certain people are paying a lot of attention to what we are saying in the place inside. I think the quote-unquote experts have paid assistants or volunteers who watch and listen to everything said on the internet and then report anything of meaning to their boss. Now, the following words came to me yesterday. I don't know quite what to make of it yet, but I'm sharing it with you. Here it is. You must know who God is. A strong leader, force, a good guy, or an evil gray. Listen when you feel that the world is in great peril. And those words came to me just yesterday. I am now broadcasting from Cuernavaca, Mexico. I have moved from uh, the uh, Mexico City. Cuernavaca is one of the most powerful energy sites on Earth, period, going back at least to the Olmec people. Remember, the Olmecs made those gigantic heads that Graham Hancock talks about in Fingerprints of the Gods. I have been led here. I have a full, unobstructed view of the sky. I can see mountain ranges surrounding me and volcanoes. It is the location of many UFO sightings. Today we are going to continue with our exploration and celebration of yin and yang, mopai kigung, light, remote viewing, and extraterrestrial contact through remote viewing. On this thread, there is the necessity of making contact with that fabric, that unifying field, that force, which is the stuff of the universe. This is one of our primary goals. You need to be able to reach out with the stargate within your being, the spark within you, into the living light, the liquid light, the organic light. See yourself, imagine yourself swimming in an ocean of light. Feel and hear the bubbles. This ocean is made of light, so you can inhale it. Inhale and exhale as you float deep in the shimmering ocean. But think to yourself the words liquid light. This phrase will help you to know the light. Or you can visualize pure white smoke or shining vapor coming in and out of your lungs. Then you will be able to travel with UFOs to the UFOs and through the UFOs. No amount of distance will obstruct you. You will travel anywhere you want. In the series on remote viewing, 
I want to remind you that we're working with several books. The first is Worker in the Light by George Nouri and William J. Burns. Also, Nigung, The Secret Teachings of the Warrior Sages by Costa Daneos. He is the author also of The Magus of Java. And finally, John Lamb Lash's amazing new book called Not in His Image, a book about Gnosticism that blows the lid off of all previous work on the Gnostics. The sun is coming up just now as we're doing this podcast, and it is truly an amazing sight. Here in my uh, new apartment in Cuernavaca, I have these amazing windows uh, with 360 degree views of all the surrounding territory, as I said, and I am all the way up on the top, uh, which gives me remarkable views and immediate access to the roof but the sunrise is gorgeous. And I think it is appropriate because we have been talking about light. One of the best ways to learn about light, real light, the light inside you, is by being outside, by watching the sunrise, watching the sunset. This is a deep esoteric secret that I am giving you here. I am not speaking off the top of my head. This was imparted to me by a very wise living master. I will share some more of these secrets with you in the near future. Now, It's time to jettison any fears you have about non-logic or looking crazy in the eyes of others. You know, there was a time, it's called the Saturnalia in the past, one day of the year, when people were allowed to turn the world upside down. The, uh, The religious dressed as the commoners and the commoners dressed as as the religious and the royalty, and uh, everyone was allowed to absolutely do as they wanted. And we really need to bring back this type of freedom into our society so that you do not fear about looking strange or unusual to other people. Again, this does not mean that you are going to go out and wear the uniform of, say, uh, the Goths or uh, people who wear all black, something like that. That's just a uniform. Dress as you want to dress. Talk as you want to talk. Think as you want to think. It's time now to test out how your intuition makes you feel about the events you encounter. Now here's how the exercise works. It's very simple, but in order to get you, you have to let go of your doubt over your analysis and, above all, your logic. Call it an intuition test or a test of gut instinct, which is actually another name for intuition. This is another one of those situations you can't force, but you have to let happen. It will just happen someday completely out of the blue. Now, Rudolf Steiner said that you never know how close you are to enlightenment. It all depends on your past lives and your karma. You may be a hair's breadth away from fully awakened consciousness, 
or you may unfortunately be several lives away from it, but you don't know. My best guess is to just keep working on this, and one day this is going to happen to you, and one day soon, because you are listening to the place inside. Nevertheless, you must begin it by saying your mantra, meditating on the light, so that the conscious thoughts of the day that can affect the way you process passive information simply float away and have as little residual effect as possible. Imagine a situation that you are about to enter. It might be a business meeting, a social date, buying a house, renting an apartment, or anything else of consequence. See yourself in that event, just like the life-space exercise we talked about earlier. Only, in this exercise, try not to force yourself to imagine an outcome. Just picture the situation as a space around you. Now, try to imagine what you're feeling in the situation. What are your emotions? What are you feeling in your gut? Don't try to explain or rationalize your feelings. That's very important. Simply note them honestly. Now, completely walk yourself through the situation and note all the feelings you have as you come out the other side. Write down the entire experience, if you can, simply to memorialize it on paper. You're not committing yourself to anything, only capturing your feelings, just like you captured your feelings about other things I suggested. When you've completed the exercise, go back and read your notes. Next, again without trying to explain anything away, Take your pen or pencil in your opposite hand and quiz yourself with meaningful questions about what you wrote and the emotions you experienced in your situational space experience. What is the opposite side of your brain telling you to ask and what are the answers? Remember, this not only brings you in contact with the opposite side of your brain, but doing things with the non-dominant hand, as we've said before, strengthens your etheric body. And your etheric body, remember, is the template, the blueprint of your body. Okay, so to strengthen your brain, to strengthen your organs, to strengthen your muscles, also to rejuvenate yourself. This is very important. The etheric body can help uh, wind back the years. Work with your non-dominant hand. So, with a combination of your notes and your questions and answers, it will be very interesting because they will reveal the pure intuition signal that you're receiving and that you might be bearing under a ton of logic and rational explanations. Also, you're probably burying it underneath what we talked about called the shadow, that part of you that comes from culture that comes from organized religion, that comes from your parents, that part of you that has been instilled in you that tells you, this is right, this is wrong, I can do this, I am not allowed to do that. Free yourself from that. This reveals not something that will definitely turn out one way or another 
in that meeting or in that party or the social date, buying the house, whatever. But how you believe or feel something might turn out. Even if your scale was as simple as feel good or bad, with nothing in between and no gradations, it's telling you a lot. In a job situation, if you're feeling very sick about what you're doing to yourself in a particular meeting, it's your intuition speaking to you about what's really going on. It doesn't mean you can avoid the situation necessarily, but it does help you recognize your feelings and the potential for problems on the horizon. Just that recognition will help you through it because many of our problems with our life situations happen as a result of our denying reality. Where, where this exercise really works is in the ability to help you identify emotions and physical sensations associated with the specific situations. You're considering renting an apartment, like I just was doing, walking through the neighborhood, meeting people in elevators, and seeing how you fit. Sure, it might be a great apartment at a great price, but is it great if you're going to be unhappy there? Thus, even as you're considering it, you close your eyes, repeat your mantra, cleanse your mind with the liquid light, get rid of that logical overlay, and then float your consciousness to the apartment. You visualize yourself there, going up and down in the elevator, and meeting people. You see what emotions and physical sensations it evokes. If the sensations and emotions are decidedly negative, realize that it is your intuition speaking to you. Don't deny it. Deal with it as the lightning rod that it is. Also, there is a magnificent feature about the universe. Now, you can take any sacred book, okay? And if you are thinking about a major life decision, you can ask the universe with sincerity, with the light, your question, and just open that book at random and see what it has to say. Sometimes the answer comes immediately. Sometimes you have to think about it during the day. And in a flash, the realization of what you read will come to you. Eventually, you'll get so good that you'll be able to just open up a newspaper or any book in your bookcase and do the same. But remember, the sacred revealed literature of the world. And remember, we are not pushing any particular spiritual path or faith. We are pushing the liquid light. We are, picked, uh, we are guiding you to the center of our galaxy. So, when you discover how you might feel after having walked through an upcoming event, you should be able to sense whether you need to be there, or whether you can avoid being there, or whether you can sense danger on the rise. Okay, now here is where we start to connect with the extraterrestrials and the UFOs. Can you travel to this UFO? Do you want to travel to a particular planet or star system? Is it safe there? Will you be welcome there? And so forth. Many of you know that 
all human beings have a nexus of neurons in an area around the stomach. And remember, we were talking about the Dantian. They are actual brain cells that is right around our stomachs. It's really like having two brains, one inside the skull and one inside the belly. Now, I'm not just talking about the physical stomach, but also the intestines have serotonin, a neurotransmitter present in them. So we are actually talking about the entire belly area and see this energy moving in circular patterns. This is what how the orgone moves. The orgone moves in circles. Just last night I was on the roof with a new friend, Daniel, and we were looking at the sunset and he was seeing these sparkles in the sky. Now, if you are in touch with the orgone, you can actually see it as sparkling stars in the daylight, in the, in the daytime sky. But I urge you, when you have that awful sensation of foreboding, and it hits you right in the gut, listen to it. It's your intuition talking. Don't dismiss it, heed it. You could be walking into a trap you could have avoided. And don't deny the legitimate feelings you have about people and situations that you probably experience every day of your life. Learn how to say your mantra, to open up your communication with the universe. Let your doubts and your fears float away on the river, like water off a duck's back. And when you have quieted the static that blots out your ability to receive a pure signal of perception from the larger universe, you will experience the absolute fulfillment of hearing your intuition talk to you and guide you through life's situations. This is a powerful aspect of remote viewing that's rarely talked about because this is a combination of remote viewing and remote feeling, which is rarely said. Just imagine the possibilities of being able to experience different types of sensations from your own future, of being able to wield a power of cognition that acts like a radar beam, showing you a glide path through life, and of having the confidence to make decisions about yourself based on a real knowledge of what lies in store for you. What's the nature of the science that lies behind your untapped powers? No less than the science that has already shown that you can psychically project yourself to remote locations, including the future, that you can levitate your own body, and that through the sheer power of focusing your intentions, you can actually manipulate the future. Let's go to Nigung Mopai for a little bit and their teachings on the yin and the yang, for example. The concepts of yin and yang are ubiquitous. Their presence traceable far back in the mists of time. And I've tried to put up a few photos of some real ancient examples of this. The Mesot Mesopotamians had known about them, as had the ancient Greeks, Indians, Persians, and Chinese. 
now you may be thinking, Lawrence, where where are the pictures of uh, the yin yang symbol that I'm so familiar with? Well, the caduceus, a symbol used by the ancient Greeks and today erroneously instituted as the emblem of medicine, shows two serpents entwined around a staff. This is another symbol of the yin and yang forces at work. The staff of Asclepius, the god of healing to the ancient Greeks, shows a single snake. I believe that is of the yin energy. Now, and that single snake is coiled around the staff. There is a Mesopotamian vase in the Louvre dating to 2000 BCE. Once again it shows two coiled snakes. This is one of the oldest representations. The astonishing fact to discover is that this symbol of a coiled serpent was eventually adopted by Christianity as well, becoming the standard carried even today by bishops and patriarchs of the Eastern Orthodox Church on their patriarchal staff. The chakra called by the Hindus the thousand-petaled lotus can be seen metaphorically opening in the jeweled uppermost section of the staff. What does this seemingly ubiquitous symbol actually depict? Two plumes of energy curled in a lover's embrace? Most certainly, and yet more. Nearly everyone remembers the standing wave of physics from their high school classes as the wave goes up and down and the particles that make up the waveform follow the same path again and again. In, in music, we, walk, uh, we work with triangular waveforms, square waveforms, and what we call sine waveforms. It is important that we keep this concept of the standing wave in mind because we're going to take this idea from the two-dimensional to the three-dimensional. A common mistake when looking at drawings of the chakras of Eastern mysticism and their corresponding nadis or channels is to think of them as two-dimensional. Such is not the case. Like the caduceus, these representations, in fact, depict the two energies entwined around each other in a three-dimensional shape. When drawing the nadi and chakras on wall paintings in simplified form, or in very complicated forms, the artist of India and Tibet opted for a two-dimensional view as easier to draw and comprehend Actually, I, I think this also has to do with the awakening of the ability to de depict three-dimensional views in painting. It's very interesting if you pause to consider for a moment the development of the human being just in painting alone. First of all, think of the depictions of babies, of children, in paintings. If you notice, in the older paintings, they never could get the face and body of a child, of a baby, correct. They just, for some reason, didn't know how to paint the face of a baby. And then also think about perspective, how perspective was somehow awakened, probably reawakened, in art. At one time we know from the pictures, the paintings we see, 
that the paintings were done in two dimensions and then suddenly artists were painting in three dimensions just like suddenly artists were able to finally paint the face of a baby it is something to think about now just like the DNA strand as you see pictures of it in books it looks two-dimensional but it is actually three-dimensional what does all this mean is it mere coincidence now the universe is fractal and we have stated before that what occurs macrocosmically must occur microcosmically as above so below what establishes our being, our personality, our physical capabilities, maybe our very soul, is nothing more or less than perhaps a standing wave in the yin field. This wave replicates itself fractally, initially taking shape in the yang field of space-time, within the DNA of the embryo, that is to become our body. As we grow older, this wave is still with us and makes up a network of peaks and nodes that are the nadi and chakras of our yin substance. That is why we need to strengthen this as we grow older day by day so that when we slip out of the body we are fully conscious aware we have our memories with us we know who we are we can orient ourselves we can experience in a much more conscious way what is happening to us, where we should be going, and what we should be doing. Unfortunately, there will be many people, there have been many people, who after they have died, have no idea where they are. They are in complete terror, because They've never done any kind of spiritual, metaphysical, esoteric, or occult work in their lives. So they are not at all familiar with these realms. Other people, unfortunately, are almost dead on the other side, and it will take many lifetimes for them to have any sort of consciousness between lives. Finally, I want to say a few words about DMT. And this comes from a very interesting book called E.T. Culture, Anthropology in Outer Spaces, uh, edited by Deborah Battaglia. And she writes the following, Ubiquitous indeed, grays show up even in the realm persistently described as an alternate dimension. Familiars of de-territorialization, these aliens are primarily informational beings. Many volunteers encounters with life forms in these non-material worlds involve the powerful sense of an exchange of information. The type of information varied widely. Sometimes it concerned the biology of these beings. At once biological and informatic, this quote-unquote powerful sense is indeed sensory and packs a paradoxically informative wallop. Now, I cannot on YouTube recommend in any way, shape, or form the taking of drugs, but we know of the work done 
about DMT and I want to mention San Francisco Bay Area psychonauts Gracie and Zarkoff write that for an interval of one to five minutes after smoking DMT, quote, for all practical purposes, you will no longer be embodied. You will be part of the intergalactic information network, unquote. Many of you know, most of you know probably that for a long time a debate has been raging on between the path of, shall we call them drugs, and the path of the meditator or the fakir. Um, now, what I'd like to say about that is this. I have had experiences through both. And the one thing with experiences such as DMT is that they are very similar to dream experiences in that after you have them, very quickly you soon begin to forget them. They begin to fade away. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, the details begin to fade away. These substances are very good if you need a sense, or let's say we're just talking for informational purposes here. Again, I'm not recommending anything. But if one perhaps needs a sense of uh, confirmation that these alternative realities exist, that these aliens are very much real, if one finds oneself frustrated and uh, thinking that one is never going to experience this. On the other hand, the experiences that are found and experienced through the work that I am teaching you, if they are taught by a proper teacher, of spirituality and I have had some incredible masters who have taught me these experiences will be with you for the rest of your life you can access them anytime the memories will always stay with you and the contacts that you make on the other side will be lifetime contacts. Okay, so this ends our transmission for this brilliant light-filled morning in Cuernavaca. We will be in contact soon.